Hello everyone and welcome to another how-to video. My name is Oliver Draper, CTO for COP. Uh, and what we're going to look at today is how to configure the smart linkage system on a TandemView PTZ. Uh, this one here is the Height Vision 7-inch uh, 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 TandemView camera. Uh, there's two available options for this one. You can either get it in where the uh, static camera top is in IR or there is a color view option which is the one we're looking at. Uh, uh, today. Uh, so both channels are 4 megapixel. Obviously the top one is static, that doesn't move. Um, this one here has got the colour view uh, white lights there on the IR version. Obviously it's uh, IR LEDs. Uh, and the idea being what you can do is you can draw a line crossing or an intrusion detection on the static camera at the top there. Upon a line crossing or intrusion or whatever the event is you've configured being triggered, that then uh, sends a command to the PTZ to basically track the object and follow it around automatically upon that event completing it goes back to its normal uh, view so both channels are four megapixel uh, the one here at the bottom is powered by dark fighter so that's the uh, entry level to dark fighter does mean it is possible that it may go to black and white if it's got a really dark scene but majority of the time it should hopefully stay uh, in color so it's got ii leds on the side and at the bottom there we've even got two white light strobe lights for the live guard feature so this camera has got the facility to an audio out uh, as well as flash or strobe lights uh, on the audio out there are up to 10 pre-recorded phrases built into the camera which you can select uh, you can also upload your own pre-recorded phrase to the camera as well so you can do a custom audio message uh, there's another video on our youtube i'll pop the link in there later if you want to know how to upload your own custom audio message to a live guard camera so what we'll do we will get this fitted we'll dial into it and we'll take a look how we just set up that uh, linkage system okay so we're going to uh, log into the camera now uh, i've got an sc7c tandem view camera currently mounted outside this one is the ir version uh, but for non tense purposes, uh, it doesn't really matter which of its IR or color view. The settings are exactly the same when it comes to configuring the smart linkage between the static camera and the uh, PTZ. So I'm just going to log into the camera, which has already been um, pre configured with a username and password. Uh, I've already given it an IP address. Other than that, this camera is in default method. Uh, so as you can see, it is two channels. Uh, so you've got one channel for the static, one channel for the PTZ, uh, as we can see uh, just there. So if I go into uh, configuration at the top now, uh, we'll take a look at some of these uh, settings. So you've got your usual settings there under your system settings, the basic information about the camera, your time settings which you can configure. Again, it is in default standard. Let's just synchronize that with my laptop time just to make sure obviously that's the correct uh, date and time on there, which it is. Set your DST, if RS45, your VCA resource, by default, the camera is in smart event for your line intrusion. You can have it to do face capture uh, and then do the smart event on camera two, should you wish. Uh, maintenance is usually where you always get, you can reboot, default to update the firmware and so on. Uh, so we're not gonna go through all these settings. You will be familiar with most of these settings already because they are the same as any normal uh, height vision camera. Just be aware when you go to your image settings, uh, as I mentioned, because there's two channels, um, you've got one channel which is for your PTZ and then one channel which is for your static camera as well. So whatever you're changing on one, make sure you change on the other to get the optimal image settings. Likewise, for your on-screen display, you've got two there. Uh, so obviously your static camera uh, and then you obviously got the option for the, uh, the, the PTZ as well. So again, when you're changing the on-screen display, make sure you're setting correct ones on there as well. So if we look under the PTZ settings, because we're going to look at the pan tilt zoom side of things, under basic settings, you've got all your usual base settings, including your power off memory and things that sort of nature. Your limit stops, so you can limit uh, how far the PTZ can spin around, so it can go no further right than here, no further left than there. Again, you've got if you don't want anyone pointing a brick wall, you could set those up on there. Set what your initial position to be, so on your PTZ to say, yeah, you know what, I'm happy with that being my initial position. So I could then just go, yeah, let's set that, and let's set that as my initial position, so if the camera ever does anything, when it goes back, this will be its default initial position. Park action. Uh, this is where we can set the PTZ to be to be looking in a certain area uh, on, whenever there's any any no action taking place at all. So the idea being, you've moved the camera around, you're looking over there. After uh, so many seconds of no activity on the camera, it can go back to a default area. So for example, for naval park action, I can say after five seconds, what do I want the camera to do? Do an auto scan, do a frame scan, random scan, patrol pattern preset, panorama scan, or tile scan. So rather than the camera just sat there idle. After so many idle uh, seconds, in this case five, uh, it can then do one of these following actions, should you wish. Privacy mask is where we can block out certain parts of the scene, should we wish to, so we can't be accused of looking to areas we shouldn't be doing. 
Schedule task. Uh, schedule task is where we can get the camera to do a specific action at a certain point of time on a specific day. Um, we can configure up to 10 schedule tasks per day. Um, each one can't be overlapped because obviously you can only do one thing at once. Um, but we can have a park action and a schedule task enabled together. So the way it goes in order priority is manual control will always take priority over the camera. If there's no manual control, then it falls to a schedule task. If there's no schedule task, then it falls to a park action. And that's the order of priority it goes in. Fairly simple to do a schedule task. You simply enable it at the top. Say I want to do a, pre a panorama scan and you just drag whatever time frame you want to. And then I can say, actually, I want it to do a preset uh, here and here. And you just simply build up however you want your uh, schedule to be for your camera doing certain things at a certain time. Clear config, this makes it quite easy rather than defaulting the entire camera. If you just want to clear the presets, patrols, patterns, privacy mask, things like that, you can just clear an individual thing. Smart track. Smart tracking is on the PTZ where we can turn this feature on and this will just track anything in the scene uh, whatsoever. So ideal if you're just looking at somewhere and say, yeah, I want to track anything. Let's just go with that one and we can turn it on here. Not commonly used anymore uh, because, again, you are going to get the occasional false alarms and tracking things that quite frankly, you're not actually interested in. Prioritize PTZ. This is if you've got multiple users accessing the camera, we can set a time delay. So if I just quickly go back to uh, the uh, system settings for a minute, under user management, obviously we're logged in as the administrator. Now I can add other accounts in here, such as operator or users. So administrator has the highest level of authority, then it falls to an operator, and then the lowest form of authority is a user. So let's say you've got some operators and users in there. An operator can be logged into the camera, moving it around, looking at what they want to. User logs into the camera, uh, and they too can log in, move the camera around, and anything else. However, if an operator logs in at the same time as user, they can override the user's authority and start moving the camera, and it sort of locks the user out from being able to do anything. Once the operator has finished moving the camera, in this case at the moment, the uh, user has to wait 10 seconds before they can take control of the camera again. We can increase that time if we wish to. Uh, again, the option is there. Then we've got our panorama tracking. This is if we want to turn on the feature for, um, basically there's a line of intrusion created on a static camera where that then triggers the actual uh, PTZ to start following that object. In order to turn this feature on, uh, we're going to turn it on to track. The calibration mode is set to auto, which is fine. So it means, basically means it's going to automatically calibrate its tracking parameters. You can set to manual and manually set where your uh, crosshairs are. However, the auto is usually absolutely fine. And then finally, we're going to tick tracking takeover as well. So that indicates essentially that it's going to track these objects automatically. Finally, at the top there, we've got our rapid focus. So if this camera is going to be zooming into a, a, a point on a regular basis, so for example, over at our uh, uh, trading counter door over there, if I know we're going to zoom in into it on a regular basis, what can happen with a PTZ when you go to zoom in? It takes a couple of seconds to focus and it goes a little bit blurry. What we can do, we can set an actual scene to say, zoom the camera into this area here, set a focal point. So when I zoom in in the future, it knows what the focal setting is and it will save that. So this is useful if you are going to be zooming into regular places. Uh, on a, uh, at certain places as well on your scene. So let's go to events and let's see what we've got in events. Um, we've got our standard motion detection, video tampering, alarm inputs, outputs, exceptions. Uh, and we've also got the flashing light output as well. So as I mentioned, the camera has got that live guard feature. Um, we can set how long it flashes the light for, at what frequency, and how bright it's going to be. So we can increase the brightness. We can then also set a schedule of how, 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 uh, when that light is going to be in effect. So you might only want the light flashing at night time and not in the daytime. Again, it's entirely down to user's preference. And then we've got the audio alarm output as well, because as I mentioned, the camera has got live guard. It can actually sound out an audio message as well to warn away the offender. Uh, as I mentioned, there are up to 10 pre-recorded phrases built into the camera, which you can select. Um, we can set how often it actually repeats it, so we're it five times or once or whenever, and again, you've got your schedule there below. However, as I also mentioned, we can upload our own audio phrase to the camera. So if I go into here and just go to add, I can upload my own audio phrase here. So if I go to example, uh, to my music section, I've got a pre-recorded phrase built into there, just says, welcome to COP. I can then up put that in there, give this uh, a name, so I'm just call it COP, just for nice and simple, click OK, uh, and that's then uploaded 
uh, that into the camera itself. And I can have it just to say it once when the event is triggered. And I save that. I now go to Smart Event on the left hand side. And when I go into Smart Event here, is where I can set up things like my intrusion detection, my line crossing, region entrance and exiting, which depending on which one I want. So if I go into line crossing, uh, I want to make sure that I select the appropriate camera. Um, and again, I want to make sure that obviously I'm going to be setting the flash and light output and alarm in a moment. So what I can do is I can then choose to um, enable my line crossing. It's on camera two, which is actually a static camera itself. Detection area, I can put my line in place. So let's say I put it across uh, on the floor down here. And I'll put it just across that line there. Now what I've got to be careful with regards to line crossings. As we can see, it's currently set to A to B, B to A. So in other words, it will trigger either direction. And I can set my human vehicle or other. Now in order for a line crossing to work effectively, the camera has to see 100% of the object before it goes across the line. Now here, I'm sort of at the threshold here, so I'd like to think if anyone's coming from A to B, um, the entire person should be able to be in the scene before it crosses over. If I put my line too close to the edge of the scene, this line crossing will not trigger effectively because the camera has to work out um, the full object itself, so what's 100% the target, and based off sensitivity, how much of it goes across the line before it triggers. So if I put it right up against the edge of the scene, it can't see the entire object before it triggers the actual line. So by the time it sees the entire object, it's already gone across the line and it can't do a historical trigger. Also, bearing in mind it's doing human, it needs to see that human body shape as well before it triggers that line crossing. So make sure your lines aren't too close to the scene. Um, again, I put mine across this line here. That should be absolutely fine. It shouldn't cause too much of a problem. I can even move on to that line here, essentially, and it should be okay. Uh, I've set to human and then I'm going to go just to go it from uh, B to A. I can then also set my minimum and maximum size targets as well. So I can say anything smaller than that will not trigger. And then my maximum size, I can say anything bigger than that will not trigger. And that can also help me to reduce any false alarms that I get on my scene that might be triggered by uh, animals or other objects that might have a similar shape to what a human body or a vehicle uh, looks like. Once I've set that on there, I've got my army schedule. Uh, when do I want this actual uh, line crossing to be in effect? And then finally, my linkage method. Notify Surveillance Center, which is going to notify the uh, mobile app or your VMS platform, such as Hike Central. Uh, I can have it to upload the imagery in, uh, to a memory card or a NAS drive or a, a file transfer protocol. Send an email. Or what we're going to have today is flashing alarm and audio warning. And then I just click the save option. So that's now configured and set in there now. Uh, so what we'll do, we will uh, go and take a look um, outside, try and trigger this line crossing, see what the image looks like on the actual uh, screen here, and also see uh, what the camera looks like outside. Welcome to COP. So there we go, fairly straightforward now to configure the smart linkage uh, tracking from the Panaview camera to the PTZ uh, below. Uh, a lot better solution, in my opinion, than a conventional pan tilt zoom camera. With an ordinary pan tilt zoom camera, when you go to move it to look at a particular area, especially when you go to zoom in, you lose a lot of your uh, scene that you're previously looking at. With the tandem view, however, uh, when you do go to zoom in, whether that's the actual auto tracking or whether that's the actual operator side to physically move the camera to a particular area, this camera here remains static in the scene and therefore you don't lose anything and that continues to record as a separate channel to your recorder as well. As well as all the features we saw in there, including the live guard with the flashing strobe lights on there and the audio output to help drive away uh, the offenders. If you are interested in this product, uh, get in touch with our sales team. Phone number is in the description below. Uh, email address is in there as well, as well as the links to the two separate models that we also do uh, here at COP. We've got the Color View version and the IR version. As always, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like uh, if you did like the video, and also hit that bell icon. That will alert you when we upload any new videos.